Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, say yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, I'm going to be in Arizona with Apostle Eckhart. Did he tell somebody? He'll never tell. He, he, listen, will y'all tell Apostle Eckhart to please announce that I'm going to be in Arizona and ask him to tell me when I'm going to minister, okay? All right. Yes. Okay, listen. If you Can you please share this scope? If you're using an iPhone, you can go swipe with your finger from the left to the right. If you're using, uh, if you don't have an iPhone, you have an Android from the bottom to the top. Let me see who's sharing. I see Darnella. Thank you for inviting uh, followers. I'll see you in Arizona. Yes. I'm, y'all listen, y'all gotta, I'm going to be in Orlando too. Let me, let me see. I'm going to be in Orlando uh, y'all, I be needing some help. I'm telling you, I'm putting my system together right now, okay? But I'm going to be in Orlando on the 27th and the 28th. I'm doing activation and training in Orlando. I'm going to put it on my Facebook after this scope. I'll be in Orlando preaching Friday night and um, all day Saturday. My deliverance team. So bring the sick. Bring people who need to be delivered. I'm bringing my whole team to Orlando on the 27th and the 28th of, uh, I mean, next week, we'll be right there in Orlando. I'm going to cast Mickey Mouse out of some folk. I'm just kidding. I love, well, we haven't been in a while, but I, I love going to Disney World. Okay, so we have Jeff, Jeff Nisi. Uh Hello, near Myrtle Beach. Hi, praise God. Can you guys, who who's sharing? Is everybody sharing? I, I want somebody. There's Michelle Horn, 72. Uh Okay, Khan's Visitation Conference is, oh, I hope I haven't had a conflict <laughs> in a schedule. <laughs> okay, hello from Phoenix. When is Prophet's Visitation Conference? Because I'm speaking there. When is Apostle's Visitation Conference, y'all? Somebody tell me when, when, when Prophet Khan, I see uh, at B, Jacqueline J Jeter. July 20. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm going to be at a prof, uh, Prophet Khan's visitation conference. Now, I know that, but, you know, I'm not there yet. So I know that's in July. Abercrombie is on. And at Lurvin, invited three people. Okay, that's wonderful. You shared it. Appreciate it, India Baker 9. Okay, listen, I got, I got a testimony. Okay, I see M... Showered? No, Miss Howard. Y'all, this hard to read. 21. Okay, I can't see what this. I shared. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. That's Miss Howard, 21. Thank you, Miss Howard. Marie E. Randall. L. Wortherman shared. Candy One. Mommy Sheba. Will Mac, 9535. Nurse Girl, 34. Oh, you just got my demon dictionary. The devil I hate that demon dictionary, okay? All right. So y'all just keep sharing. Let's get listen, I got a testimony, okay? Some of you, I don't know if you, you watch on uh Facebook. I have posted, I'm gonna be 55 on June the 12th. We are having a double grace meeting. The the the, the whole weekend is a celebration. I'm preaching Friday night. Uh then all day, me and ministers from my church, we're going to be ministering from nine to three. We're going to also have a lot of you been asking me about uh, mentoring and covering. Uh, we're going to have a session just for people that want to be covered and want to be mentored. So we're going to have a session on the, that's the 11th, on the, the night of the 10th. I'm going to be preaching on the 12th, on my birthday. Yay! I'll be five, five, double five, 55 years old. And on my birthday, um, that morning, uh, well, noonday service, we're going to have five prophets. Now, we're we, we working all that out. It's going to be in Jacksonville at Spoken Word Ministries, 1445 Steel Street, on the corner of Steel and Blue. I see somebody said they'll be 50 on, on the 13th, the day after. So we're celebrating our fives, okay? Um, we're going to have five prophets, uh Speaking out prophetic words, we'll have Prophet Bobby Orange. We'll have, uh, I'm ordaining Alicia Sullivan as a prophet. We're going to have Prophet Marilyn Anzueta. We're going to have uh, Prophet uh, uh, Neil. 
um, from our ministry. And, 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 and there's another prophet we're trying to get, and he's trying to work out a schedule, but we're going to have five prophets ministering on, uh, on Sunday. But guess what? On Sunday night, we're going to have Sunday night live with prophet Brian Carn. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. We're going to party in Jesus. Okay. I want to have fun. I'm going to spend my birthday with Jesus in church all weekend. How many of y'all know we need Jesus, Jesus, church, 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 anointing, anointing, anointing. Okay. So you can go to my Facebook. Can you, can you guys please go to my Facebook, like the, the whole page, like the whole Facebook, like the post that I put on about the conference or any other, other, other posts and, uh, go to my, and please make a, make a comment. But you know, I, I got a testimony to talk about. Uh, y'all know the twins, we, what is today? Thursday. Um, we have about a week, a little over a week and the twins will be in college. My last babies are in college. They, they are a hundred and, and almost 200 pound babies, six feet, six, one, but they still my babies, but they will be at the university of Maryland. After I come out of Orlando, I'll be going straight to, to get the boys set up in school and drop them off. Put, put that on the screen. Drop them off. Drop. I've been looking forward to the day. To, now I'm going to take care of my baby, but I'm glad to drop them off. It's time for the next level for the, for the twins. Okay. And so, but let me say this. Okay. Drop them off. <laughs> okay. I, um, I took the twins to Pastor Gilmo. Have you ever heard of El Rey Jesus? Um, uh, it's a all Spanish speaking church, Pastor Gelmo Maldonado, um, in, in, uh, in, in Miami, Florida. I took the twins, uh, by El Rey Jesus. They were raised up going to that church, Pastor Maldonado and his wife, Anna Maldonado, King Jesus, El Rey Jesus is, is Spanish, is for King Jesus. And I took the twins, uh, by to, for him, for his blessing. I believe in the blessing. I believe in the blessing. Well, Pastor Maldonado blessed the twins, but he also gave them, I didn't, he just gave them two envelopes and one in each envelope, there was $500. So I said, Oh wow. And I'm, and I'm talking to the twins. Yay. God gave y'all $500. So I said, let's pay our tithe. We were, we paid tithe at Pastor Maldonado's church. The twins paid their tithe and I put a hundred dollar offering in with it. So making a long story short, me and the boys had a little talk. And I, I said, okay, that we're going to allocate this money for your prom. You know, you guys got to be responsible. Y'all don't spend a lot of money. So I put the money in their account. And guess what? The twins had other ideas and they spent the money for the prom. So when I went to the bank, just going for something else, when I found out the twins spent their prom money, I'm telling you, I was fire hot. Okay. And I'm looking at them like, I know, I didn't even want to speak to them. I was like, they, I told them not to do that. So I'm, 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 I'm struggling with, ah, they shouldn't go to no prom anyway. They don't have the, oh, what can I do? What can you do to punish kids? Uh, when it's graduation, prom celebration, you know, they got you between a rock and a hard place, but I, I said, I'm not going to even talk to them right now because I'm so mad. I'm going to say something else. So I didn't call the twins. I was getting ready to go to training at spoken word, training my leadership. We, we're getting it ready for the meeting in Orlando. We got new people training them, getting ready to hit the road. Put it, put it on screen. The demon buses are hitting the road again. <laughs> Next week, I'm taking a team on the road. I haven't done that in a while. but uh, So I'm, I'm getting ready to go train my team. And I, I pick up this. Y'all know the little uh, containers that have the cassette tapes in them a long time ago. And I'm going through my stuff. Uh, from the, and I run into a, some 1999 stuff from the Congress on Deliverance. I see the old Congress on Deliverance book. You can't get that. The one, the first major conference I was in, and it had a set of tapes in it for pigs from, uh, Frank and Ida Mae Hammond, the authors of Pigs in the Parlor. So, you know, this was cassette tape. So, you know, it was old. So I opened the cassette tape container and five 100 crisp look like they brand new. I ain't opened this thing since 99. Five. Say five. Everybody put five on the screen. Five. Say five. Okay. <laughs> Tell a story about New Orleans. Y'all distracting me. Five crisp $100 bills fall out on the floor. Y'all let me tell y'all something. Them twins, them some, they are some praying boys. I'm not gonna talk. I'm, I'm gonna talk about when, when my son went to the Super Bowl. I, I didn't know no better, y'all. I didn't understand Super Bowl. I had 
eight 50 yard line tickets to go to the Super Bowl. I'm in Phoenix and I'm thinking, wow, these tickets are worth $10,000 a piece. I'm telling twins, we can go to the after party and be rich. You know, I didn't understand Super Bowl. The twins were little babies. I kept trying to sell them tickets. Every time I went somewhere, nobody showed up. And the twins was going, and we buying our mama. We buy. <laughs> it was little they've been buying a meal. Oh, them boys know how to pray. So I know they probably was praying. They weren't talking to me. We done messed up with mama. So, you know. So the twins, I knew they had to be praying. I saw them five one hundred dollars hit the ground. I said, okay, the twins and God, and then, then, uh, they arranging a conspiracy on me. I didn't say nothing. Went on about my business. The twins called me the next day. They don't know about the five one hundred dollar bills. So they called me the next day. And mama, we went somewhere. We found the outfit. How much? Six hundred dollars a piece. I said. They said, but we're not getting that. We're going to another store. So I said, I was waiting on them to tell me how much does your, because I'm, cause I'm getting ready to fuss. I'm, I'm going to tell them how they had the money and all I'm getting ready for. When the twins called me and they said, I said, how much are your outfits? Mama, we put it all together. It's exact. How much is it? 500 Can you believe that? Can, how can you fuss when God moving? You know, put put that on the screen and say, how can you fuss when God is moving? People still want to fuss. Sometimes you got to shut it down and say, God wants you to be like Timex, take a look at licking and keep right on ticking. He wants you to just suck it up and move on. You ain't going to get the enjoyment of fussing this time. God going to bless you before you get a chance to fuss. There's some people that just like the fuss. They just like the complain. They like the murmur. They like the gripe. They're, 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 they're fuss boxes. God is delivering. Well, he's delivering me from that. I was ready to get those twins. Okay. God and let $500 fall out from nowhere. The twins. So y'all know, I was like, hurry up and get, you know, y'all look, look online. You can see a sneak preview of one of, of one of the twins outfits. I put it on, go to Facebook and Kimberly Daniels, public figure, Kimberly Daniels, public figure. But I was really struggling with doing this, uh, double grace meeting you know, see, grace, the, the, the definition of grace that I like, there's so many definitions, is unmerited divine assistance from humans to God. Does anybody, um, is anybody out there watching me need some divine assistance from God? You know, put up on the screen. I ain't trying to distract y'all by putting, a, putting stuff on the screen, but I need it up there. Put divine assistance from God. Divine assistance from God. Put it up on the screen. You know, it's, it's a virtue or excellence of divine origin. See, see when you when you get when God interrupts your plan, when God gets in your personal business, and you know when God listen, what can you say? What can I say when five hundred dollar bills fall out of nowhere and I haven't picked that thing up since nineteen ninety nine? So that's ninety nine two thousand. Okay, so that's one year plus sixteen. That's seventeen years. In seventeen years. That $500 had to be sitting there 70. That's some anointed $500. Do you hear me? I probably was hiding it, saving it, believing God for something, putting it somewhere. But 17 years later, bam, it just falls out on the ground. The twins uh, clothes come to $500 and we just giving God the glory. Oh, you, some, some, I, I can't stand intellectual spirit. Now intellectual spirit. Oh, it was just, no, you can't talk your way out of this. I, this is my prom miracle. And I thank God for, for, for what he's doing. But I, I, I don't think it's by chance that Maldonado gave a set of twins, $500 each, um, five $100 bills, Fell. I'm not trying to get in no numerology or nothing like that, but guess what? Th that sometime God will speak to you through the least thing that you expect, and you you know, and 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 the, and the key is you can't make it a habit, or you can't make it. You know, you ain't walking around looking for a number. That's witchcraft. But when God drop a number on you, you got to be ready to receive it. Okay, okay. And and the and the bill wasn't five hundred dollars and fifty three cent, five hundred dollars and seventy nine cent. It was five hundred dollars. Thank you, Susan. Uh, 39 for sharing. So we getting ready to kick some devil butt um, with this teaching um, from I, I want to talk about and I want to invite you. You know, I know Benny, he ain't going to be in town. 
I know Apostle John Abercrombie is having a marriage conference somewhere. I don't have, you know, if I ain't got the information on mine, I, I know Benny Hinn is going to be at uh, Pastor R.J. Washington. Do y'all know there's enough people in the world, in Jacksonville, in the church that we can have meetings and, and there's some folk gonna, that's going to rather come and get on the altar with me. There's some going to want to go fall out under the power let, with Benny Hinn and Wade. There's some that's going to go to Apostle Abercrombie's and, 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 and get the ministry that they need for marriage. But for those of you who are going to meet me right here in Jacksonville, Florida, on Steel and Blue at the home of the Demon Busters, you say, when is my birthday? June the 12th. I will be 5'5", five, five, double grace. Come and celebrate with me. I'm going to be ordaining some prophets. I'm going to be lay. I'm going to lay hands on everybody in there Friday night. Okay. Prophet Karn is coming. We're going to have prophets prophesying to everybody. We got a room full of prophets, a team full of prophets that's going to be there on my birthday. You want, you know what I want on my birthday? I want for, I want the people of God to be blessed. You know, very rarely do I spend my birthday in church. I like to go have fun, but how many of you know we can have fun in church? So, so if y'all coming, please don't be religious. It's my birthday. I'm going to have fun. It's my birthday with Jesus. Anyway, anyway. Okay, so Prophet Prophet Khan wants you to what? Oh, I think Prophet Khan shared me. I don't even know what that means. Okay, I see Prophet name, Khan name came up there for some. Oh, yeah, he must have shared me because I see all these people come on. Hello, everybody from Brian Khan Ministries. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As I was saying, just speaking, Prophet Brian Khan is going to be doing Sunday Night Live on my birthday. Y'all know I'm 55. We're not going to talk about how old Prophet Karn is. Y'all know I'll be 55, and I don't know what God is going to tell the prophet to do, but he'll be the prophet of the hour. The prophetic atmosphere will already be set. We're going to have five prophets. Five, there's that number again. Two, 12. Oh, I'm Friday night, I'm laying hands on everything moving. All day Saturday, we're doing activation for deliverance. We're training for deliverance, and I'm doing some mentoring and covering a special session because people keep asking me and we're just going to set a special time aside for that. Saturday night, we're not having no service. I may be over at Benny Hinn. Probably, I don't know. Um, Sunday morning, we got the five prophets. We're going to close it out with my good friend and the man of God who is a true prophet, Prophet Brian Carn. I'm honored that he's going to be there ministering to people. And I'm telling you on it's my birthday, yeah, but it's, but every day is is a day we celebrate Jesus. We're gonna celebrate Jesus um, Sunday night. I know one 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 of the advertisements have seven. We're gonna start at seven thirty because we want to get hello from India. I see you there. That's so sweet. Somebody's on from 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 India. But let's talk about double grace, okay? I told you about about the definition that I put together: unmerited divine assistance from God. But but let 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 me go through this real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for double grace. I thank you for the double portion. God, God, I, I thank you that you're doubling up. God, I, I thank you that people are, are due and overdue in the spirit, God. And, and for those who have been through, if you're watching right now and you've gone through anything, you're getting ready to be real blessed. If you can't go through, you can't grow through. If you ain't getting no persecution, you ain't got no power. Power draws persecution. I don't hang out with folk who are not persecuted. So, so, so some folk may say, well, well, why is everybody in that apostolic movement? People are always talking about us. You know, my, I got a new account and he was like, wow, you know, you really go through and, you know, people are lying on us all the time. Listen, they lied on Jesus. Check out the apostles in the Bible. Check out the prophets in the Bible. A true sign that it's a prophet of God, an apostle, a five-fold ministry gift is that persecution. Put that on the screen. Persecution accompanies power. Okay? And, and, and if you want to put it another way, no persecution, no power. If you're not persecuted, you don't have any power. Isaiah 61 and 7 it says, instead of shame, you'll receive a double portion. That's summoning, summoning all, up, all up. It says, for your shame, you shall receive double. See, some of us are so shamed, we can't receive shame. You, so, Sometimes you got, you got to be ashamed. You know, you know what? Uh, uh, the word uh, humble, uh, uh, humility, the root word is humble. Listen, 
with all this anointing we walk in, I'm telling you that, you know, the Bible says that some, the word of God is not just in word, but it's in, in power. And Paul was talking about how some became puffed up. Listen, you don't have to be evil to become puffed up. God had to deal with me with some things I've done. I have to say, sister, you got to pull yourself right on back in. But just, because just as sure as God used you, just as sure as you got folk following you on Periscope, just as sure as you are anointed, the devil is going to try you with that spirit called pride. Y'all look at the Periscope or the rerun or whatever you got. I did a teaching on pride. But God ain't calling us to be puff, puffed up. And sometimes when you see us going through something, God is busting our bubble. So he'll take us to another another level. I say it like this. Sometimes God will bust your bubble so he can give you double. I, I think sometimes I need to be making up some songs or some raps or something. But sometimes God will bust your bubble so that he can make room for double. God don't want us to be puffed up. In Isaiah 61 and 17, it says, for your shame, you shall receive double. It says, for confusion, they rejoice in their portion. Okay, it's time for us to rejoice in our portion. What God has for us, it is us. That word portion in the Hebrew is kalak. And I'm, I'm portion. You know, get your portion, get your kalak. And I'm going to give you the pronunciation spelling so you can pronounce it. Not the real Hebrew, but K-A-Y-L-E-K. Put that on the screen for somebody for me. K-A-Y-L-E-K. K-Lack. It means portion. Rejoice in your K-Lack. Rejoice in your portion. And, and, and that word literally means to take away a portion and separate self. k -lack. It means to take away a portion. It means, to, it, it, it means that your inheritance, your allotment, it means to be are uh, smooth to be dealt what's rightfully yours. You know, it's time for the saints of God to stand their ground, stand flat footed and receive the hand that God has dealt unto you. And if the devil has dealt, dealt an unfair an unjust or, uh, 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 and a, a portion unto you, give the devil his portion back. I, I tell you, I don't want it. Yeah, yep, I got that book, give it back. I don't want it if God didn't give. See, folk are fighting for positions. They're fighting for, folk are fighting for anointings. People want to be, folk are fighting for members. But you got to know what your portion is. You got to know that you're under the spout where the glory comes out, that the lines of the spirit have fallen upon you and sweet and, and agreeable places. And you have a godly portion. You have a godly inheritance, a good portion that belongs to you. Isaiah 61 and 7 goes on to say, they're in their land. They're in their land. They shall possess double. That's something you got to understand. Listen, you can't be, and I got to read Job. Let, let me read Job, the, 40, the 42nd chapter. I want to come back to there in your land, in your land, in your place, according to your coast. Get out of, get out of, get out of other folk coast. Now y'all going to say she real worldly, but there's a song saying, Hey, you get off my mountain. Hey, you get off my cloud. Have y'all ever, it's, I don't know. It's an old song. It's a worldly song. Hey, you get off my mountain. Hey, you get off my cloud. Let me tell you something. You can kick the devil out of your, uh, uh, out of your coast, get in your coast, you know, the, in your land, in your land, you will possess double. And what God has for you is for you, but you, but you got to be able to endure the trouble to get the double. I know that prophet car. I know, Oh, y'all should have, should have seen me preaching about two years ago in Atlanta. Oh, you could, I was, I mean, things were going kind of really good for me. Then it's going good. Now it's going better now than then. But, uh, uh, I don't know what y'all was going on here. Follow God, not man. You know, I, I don't know what all that, but I bind you. Get out, get out my coast in the name of Jesus. If somebody's saying something, y'all stop all of that communicating because the devil hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Somebody's going to get a breakthrough right now. Somebody's going to get a breakthrough right now because the enemy is coming in to try to distract. Okay. I was preaching in Atlanta. OK, I was preaching in Atlanta and I was preaching double for your trouble. I was preaching on Job, the 42nd chapter, didn't know what was waiting for me around the corner. 
I know Prophet Karm, when he found out what happened and other folk that knew that man, everybody was looking at me like, well, you prophesied it, Prophet. You spoke it. But the things that you have spoke out of your mouth, they're not just going to come to take your breath, but they're going to come and blow the Ruach of God and refresh you. You know, I, I saw that Rob Parsley was doing a meeting and it has a refresh him, but I saw in the in the spirit, you know, like the African uh preachers and like prophet Khan, they be saying, I saw it in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> when I saw it in the realm of the spirit, a refresh, a refresh symbol. I really saw that. In other words, God's getting ready to push a button and every, and, and, and let you see that what you thought wasn't there. It's going to be there. You know, when you sometimes you say, oh, it's not here, but you have to refresh your screen so that what was uh, got you on hold can be removed so that you can, you can see what, what God is doing. God's going to allow you to see your blessing as far, as far as you can see it. I know we're walking by faith, not by sight, but some of you are about to see, about to experience some manifested miracles. Now listen to this scripture. I know I've read it a lot of times, but here we go. It says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortune when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Listen, those friends weren't real friends. Those were frenemies. You got, I'm talking about people you dealing with every day that really don't like you. People that are jealous of you. You know, people that hate you. People that do wrong to you. Do you know there's power in praying for your frenemies? Not just your friends, but your friends who are really enemies. Okay. And it says that God gave Job twice as much. It says, then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before. Before what? Y'all know he got in trouble and everybody thought he was dying. They told him, to, his wife told him to curse God and die. And they ate bread with him. Everybody, wasn't nobody eating with Job no more. Job couldn't go to the, when I, you know, when things are bad, you, you eat by yourself and you hang out by yourself a lot. Folk don't want nothing to do with you, with you. When a scandal come out on you, the people who you help, the people who you done raise money for, the people you, you, you bless when they were going through hard times. Soon as you go through something, you can know who's really your friend. You'll find out who's a friend and who's a friend of me. The frenemies, they're going to get back and wait. Listen. They're going to sit back to wait to see how you come out. I don't need no friends that's going to sit back and wait to see how I come out. And it says, and they began to sympathize with him and comfort in him over all the distress and the calamities that the Lord brought upon him. First of all, if the Lord brought it upon him, then the Lord is going to work it out. Sometimes I told you sometime the Lord will bust our bubble so he can give us double. And, and not, if before they weren't giving Job uh, any comfort. They weren't sympathizing. They were making excuses and trying to say all kind of crazy things about why Job was going through. He was what he was going through. It says, but here we go right here. I like this one right here. It says, every man gave him a piece of money. How about that? What's a piece of money? Everybody brought an offering. And every man gave either a piece of money or an earring of gold. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning. Listen, when you go through, when you come out of it, the enemy don't want you to come out of it because he knows you're going to be better off than you were before. Says, and it even, I like to amplify it because it goes into to details. It says, He blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camel, 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 female uh, uh, donkeys. Job was, was strapped, okay? And it talks about these are the things he had in Job 1 and 3. It says, He also had seven sons and three daughters, and he called the names of the first Jemima. And the name of the second, Kezia, and the name of the third, Kareen Hapuk. And in, in all the land, there was no women so fair as the daughters of Job. And their fathers gave them inheritance among their brothers. In other words, uh, Job wasn't talking about women came preach and a woman came. He gave his daughters an inheritance amongst the brothers. Uh, brethren. Can you put that on the screen? The daughters received an inheritance amongst the brethren. But the father gave it to them. They were they weren't Jezebelic. They weren't uh, after liars. They weren't trying to take nothing. The father gave it to him. And you know what? I'm going to say this. 
I believe in women apostles. I am an apostle, but I don't believe all those women that got apostles on their name are apostles. I'm, I'm telling you, before I became a, a female apostle, and you know, there was some female apostles in the Bible, but I don't think it was a lot of them. And I'm not trying to say I'm special and all that, but you know, it's kind of crazy when you got female, somebody, not just females, but folk with apostle ain't never been out their neighborhood. How you an apostle? You know, that's just a great, I would not put, listen, put this on the screen. Don't put titles on your name. Okay, because apostle anointing bring apostle demons, prophet anointing bring prophet demons, evangel whatever you call yourself, unto whom much is given, much is required. Yes, the daughters receive an inheritance, the sisters among the brothers. It's an after this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his son's sons for, for four generations, four generations of blessing. And Job died, an old man, full of days. He didn't die, decrepit, broke down. Listen, we got to get out of this mentality, I'm getting old. No, I, my birthday is coming up 5-5. Five, five. Guess what? I ain't getting older. I'm getting better. You know, you know, you know, the wine that they used to say the best wine for last. You know, the, the, the longer you soak, you, you ever ate, I always use the example collard greens. You know, collard greens, they can be really tough. But, you know, when you cook collard greens just right, <laughs> say this is, is real deep from the South, talking about preaching on collard greens. But, it, but they used to have something when I grew up, see, I'm, I'm 55 years old, called pot liquor, you know. And it's the juice that the collard greens uh, 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 soak in. But after you, the leftovers are better than first. That's why God is going to give you, you what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It ain't even in it. In, in, in folks' mind and hearts and thoughts, what God is about to do for you. I want to talk to the people that's been through. If you've gone through anything, I want you right now. Don't you get off this periscope. You stay right there. I'm gonna, I want to decree and declare some things over you. Listen, one thing I want to say is while we're getting this double portion, let's make sure our hearts are right. You know, uh, um, Matthew 23 and 15 say, Woe unto you, teachers of the law. Uh, scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, you hypocrites. We don't want to mess around and get the demonic double portion. There, put it, put it on the screen. There is a demonic double portion. You can be doubly as hellish, doubly as hellish. You can get worse, po Nero. You can, you can degenerate. You can get bitter instead of getting better. Matthew 23 and 15 says, Woe unto you, teachers of the law, Pharisees and hypocrites. It says you can pass sea and land to save one soul. And by the time you get through mentoring them, discipling them, putting your spirit on them, doing whatever you're doing with them, you make them twice as fit for hell as you are. In other words, they, come, they become doubly as hellish. Now, 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 while we're releasing this and doing this, we got to make sure that we're not re releasing the double demonic. Ezekiel 43 and 17, it says that the 12 tribes of Israel were divided by boundaries. It says, but Joseph was, a, was allotted two portions. How come Joseph got two portions? Because Joseph was the one that was thrown in the pit. Joseph was the one that went to prison. If you can't endure your pit, if you can't endure your prison, you're not going to receive the double portion. Pit, prison, double portion. Pit, prison, double portion. It says out of the 12 tribes of Israel, it was allotted. There was an allocation. There was something set aside for Joseph because God gave him double for his trouble. I'm not going to be before you much longer. I just want to let you know, you know, y'all looking at folk when they going through, you judging them, you criticizing, but just keep your eyes on them. Cause watch God show up and show up just when the devil think he got his finger on them. God going to raise them up and they going to say, my God, how did you get there? My God, how did, how did prophet Karn get there? My God, how did John Abercrombie? You say, she be talking about some pro y'all. I ain't idolizing nobody. I just love the brothers who love me. Okay. You know, how, how did she get there? How did they get there? First Samuel 1 and 5, it says, Elkanah offered Penina, his wife, and her sons a portion. That's what they would do. Say, but Hannah, he gave her a double portion. Her, it was called a worthy portion. In other words, she had been through something to deserve that portion. You know, you know, you know, put this on the screen. You deserve your worthy portion. 
That double portion is a worthy portion. It's something that don't, don't be hating on folk because God blessing them. You don't know what they've been through. Amen. Okay. Second Kings two and nine. It says when they crossed over, then Elisha, Elijah asked Elisha. They had another one. They had to cross over. They had to go through some things. And, and, and Elisha and Elijah didn't get along. You know, it's not like Elisha, uh, Elisha submitted Elijah, but when I read it, it looked like Elijah was hard on Elisha, but there was a test that Elisha had to pass, you know, and, and it's when they crossed over, that's when, th that's when he was eligible. That's when they began to focus that, that he had to keep his eyes on what he was going to get because he was going to get that double portion. Because it was not hard walking. It was not easy walking with that man of God. I'm telling you, when I read the Bible, it seemed like Elijah had an attitude with Elisha to me. <laughs> okay? But Elisha said, look, I don't care what you do. You can roll your eyes. You can poke your lips. You can act ugly all you want to, sir, ma'am. I'm going to hang around you because my inheritance is in your belly. Whatever you got, Mr. Elijah, I'm going to have double. I ain't going to hate you. I'm going to love you. You know, so you might well get used to me. When you get caught up, I'm going to be right there to catch your mantle. Some folk, when, when, when the man or the woman of God moved, you weren't there to catch your mantle. Don't, don't let the enemy move you from catching your mantle over foolishness. I want the double portion. I don't know about you. Put it on the screen. I want the double portion. Exodus 16 and 5 says, on the sixth day, when they prepare what, uh, what, they, what they were to bring in, it will be twice as much as they gathered. How many of you want to receive twice as much as you gathered? Exodus 16 and 5. It said they were pre preparing what they were bringing in. And it said they were, re they were received twice as much as they gathered. Zechariah 9 and 12 is it, real simple. We're closing out with this. It said return to the stronghold. O prisoners who, who have uh, a hope. This very day, I am declaring that I will, I will restore double unto you. And that's what I'm declaring. Zechariah says, return to the stronghold. In other words, don't despise what you've been through. You know, you know, there's a, some of y'all, you can't tell your testimony yet. Everybody ain't ready for your testimony. But some of you, you can't tell your testimony yet. You're going to tell it someday. And there's some that you may never tell, but re put up on the screen, return to the stronghold. Don't you be ashamed of what you come out of, oh, prisoners who, who have a, a hope. This very day, I am declaring, says the Lord, that I will restore double unto you. Listen, are you ashamed of your bondage? Well, you're not going to get your double. No, no bondage, no double, no pain, no gain. You ain't been through nothing. You ain't going to get nothing. You know, stop crying. God, God, God wants, God wants to listen. I'm an athlete and I want to say this to you, to some of you, you, you're crying, you're, 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 you you wonder God why have you forsaken me God why God look God trying to bless you brother God trying to bless you sister He's allowing you to go through I'm not telling you it ain't gonna hurt you need you you need somebody that can pray with you to help you to get your eyes off what you're going through and get your eyes on what you're going to. I'm going to Job 42nd. Yeah, you're going to lose some friends. People are going to talk about you. You're going to become a reproach sometimes. But when God get through, when, 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 when the dust settle, you're going to come out and you will not be eaten by the lions. You're going to come out and you will not smell like smoke. And I prophesy and I decree and I declare unto you this day double, double for your trouble. Father, right now in Jesus name. My brothers, my sisters, whoever's listening to if this tape somehow get in the hands of folk after this periscope. If they're listening uh, to the to the rerun, if they're if they're replaying it, God, let, let there be a double portion on the replay. God, there's some folk going to have to watch this over and over again. But God, I pray I, I pray a mantle of grace. God, God, I thank you for double grace. God, God, I thank you that your grace and your mercy. God, God, I thank you that everything that you have stored up for us, we're receiving it, receiving it in this hour. God, I thank you for the men and the women of God coming together, touching and agreeing. God, I touch and agree. Come on, let me touch and agree with some cities right now. There's some folk you, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. You ain't got no power. You got to, you, listen, you got to have your prayer language. We, we, we're filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I'm not, a, ain't no shame in my game. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I pray 
for my enemies right now. For everywhere I know. Ain't there something, y'all? I looked on there and found out my enemies watch Periscope and, uh, and listen to me on the radio more than my partners. So, God, God, you said if we pray for our enemies, you will turn our captivity. I thank you for those right now who have the anointing, who have the sense, who have the obedience, you know, who have the discipline to pray for those who spitefully use them and come up against them. God, God, to bless those who curse them, God. God, I, I thank you right now and praise you right now that you're turning captivities. You're turning captivities. God, you're touching heart. I bind those spirits of, of bitterness and, and resentment, especially that spirit of rejection. You're a demon. I curse you to the root. I bind that rejection that turns into rebellion because people really love men and women of God. They want attention. And when they don't get the attention uh, that they think they should have, then it turns around to rebellion and they try to kill and destroy and try to and, and operate in that Luciferian spirit in ministries and in business businesses and, and in churches and, and, and in families even. God, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for the double portion. God, I thank you for the work that you've begun in your people in Detroit, in Jamaica, in Jamaica, God, in Jesus name right now, we release the double portion. Come on. I'm sorry. Let me see. That's uh, let me put my glasses on. Hallelujah. In South Carolina, Spartanburg, South Carolina, Dallas, Texas, Toronto, Illinois, Miami, and Southfield, in, in New York, Tennessee, Alabama, in Mississippi, Charleston, Seattle, Houston, Philadelphia, Miss I see Mississippi, West Virginia, West Virginia, and Houston, y'all keep coming up on here, Memphis, Naples, Florida, Cincinnati, Natty, Indiana, San Marcos, Texas, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Chicago, Illinois, Orlando, Florida, God, we pray for Orlando, we send the anointing to Orlando for this meeting that we're about to have, God. And I thank you for a double portion in Orlando on the 27th and the 28th of, of this month. In Sweden, Jackson, Mississippi, Fort Hood, Texas, Austin, Indiana, Las Vegas, Fort, Fort Worth, Texas. Hallelujah, God. Pour out on this nation. Longview. God, God, wherever the apostles, wherever the prophets, wherever Prophet Karn is on the way to, let, let the anointing meet him. Where a, a John, a Apostle Eckhart, let the anointing meet him. God, God I, I thank you right now for our brothers and sisters, God, that are partnering with us in other parts of the country. God, Canton, Mississippi, uh, Grifton, North Carolina, Louisiana, California. Hallelujah, God. I thank you for Oakland, California, in Jesus' name. Beaumont, Texas, Huntsville, Alabama. God, we bless you and glorify you. Listen, I just want to say this to y'all. Contact me. Um, where's my contact information? Here's my contact information. Post office box 28007, Jacksonville, Florida, 32226, 904-237-9362. Go to my Facebook, Kimberly Daniels, a public figure, or go to my website, KimberlyDaniels.net. Yeah, I'm out of here, y'all. I got a lot of stuff to do today. God bless you, and thank you for taking this time to, to as I'm sharing with you, to share with me. Continue to pray for, for us, y'all. God bless you.